Have you ever wondered, what does my breakfast have to do with the environment? Does changing the way I eat really make much of a difference? And do we all have to go vegan to fight climate change? Hello friends of facts and welcome to Fantastic Studies and Where to Find Them. You're welcome to stay for some exciting research from scientific papers. Today's topic is diets and their impact on the environment. In 2019, Chai and co-authors published a systematic review on which diet has the least environmental impact on our planet. They compared vegan, vegetarian and omnivorous diets. First, let's have a look at the relevance of agriculture and food production for our environment. The food sector is estimated to be responsible for 66% of the world's freshwater withdrawals. It uses 37% of the global habitable land and produces 26% of the world's greenhouse gases. Those numbers suggest that your choice in diet could be quite impactful when it comes to abating climate change. With the flood of information out there, how can we find out which diet is best for the environment? There is a pretty neat strategy that scientists use to collect, evaluate and integrate information and it's called systematic review. For a systematic review, scientific literature databases are searched using a selected set of search terms relevant to their question. Next, criteria are determined to sort through the scientific papers found in the database search. For example, vegetarian diets must only include dairy and eggs, not fish. In a stepwise procedure, paper titles are screened, abstracts are read and finally the entire paper is carefully read and evaluated. At that stage, it is important to assess the quality of each paper deemed relevant based on objective criteria. Thus, information from papers of higher quality can be given more weight during the integration of all combined information. For this systematic review, the authors screened over 1000 search results and finally assessed 34 relevant papers which made it through the systematic screening process. So what do all these papers say about our diet's water use? 12% of all ground and surface water for irrigation is used to produce animal-based foods. As an omnivore, your diet requires almost three times more water than that of a vegetarian. If your main concern is food's water use, you could have quite an impact and still indulge in dairy and eggs. Nonetheless, the authors state that the water-friendliest option is the vegan diet. So feel free to overeat on, for example, potatoes, since one kilogram of potatoes requires 18 times less water than one kilogram of beef. And when casting a vote for your favorite protein source, keep in mind that one kilogram of protein from plants needs 100 times less water than one kilogram of protein from animals. In addition to water, food production needs space. Today we often cut down forests to make more of it. This releases carbon dioxide and decreases biodiversity. In order to grow animals for meat and dairy, we need a lot more land than to grow veggies. The reason is, first of all, we need to produce the animals fodder. In effect, we need land as large as six times the US for meat production alone. This is 39% of the world's land and 70% of its agricultural land. Put into perspective, for the production of one kilogram of beef, 163 times more land is needed than for one kilogram of potatoes. In food production, not all meat is created equal. This is mainly due to the different protein conversion efficiencies. Fancy words, but protein conversion efficiency simply describes how much protein of animal feed is converted into meat. Chicken are most efficient and convert about 18% of plant protein into meat protein. For pork it's 9% and for beef only 6%. Want to eat meat but still save the forests? So simply choose chicken over beef or pork. But what about vegan alternatives? Have you ever wondered whether, for example, vegan cheese-like spread is more sustainable? One study found that the production of vegan cheese-like spread based on lupin requires 2 square meters of land per 1 kilogram, whereas cheese from cow's milk requires 10 square meters of land per 1 kilogram. This is 5 times more. If all meat and dairy products would be replaced by plant-based food, land use could be reduced by 50% according to one study. And what if everybody ate beans instead of beef? In the US, this could free almost 700,000 square kilometers of land. That means the entire size of Texas, the second largest state in the US, could be reforested. It would also reduce your meal's greenhouse gas emissions by 
So let's take a look at those. As you have probably heard by now, the emission of greenhouse gases leads to the warming of our atmosphere. If you want to know how and why exactly this happens, have a look at this brilliant summary by clicking the above link. When it comes to animal-based foods, ruminants, that is cattle or sheep, and their products produce more greenhouse gases than for example pigs or chicken. In effect, red meat production is estimated to generate 23% of all agricultural greenhouse gas emissions. One study estimates that 1 kg of beef produces 71 times more carbon dioxide than 1 kg of soybeans. In other words, if you wanted to achieve the same emissions by eating soybeans as by eating 200 grams of beef steak, you would have to eat more than 14 kilograms of beans. While the exact numbers vary with the estimations and the foods compared, plant-based foods generally release less greenhouse gases than animal-based foods. Now here's the comparison of different Western diets and their greenhouse gas emissions. Vegetarians emit 1.3 times more greenhouse gases than vegans. Low meat eaters, eating less than 50 grams of meat per day, emit 1.6 times more greenhouse gases than vegans. Medium meat eaters, eating between 50 and 100 grams of meat per day, emit 2 times more greenhouse gases than vegans. And high meat eaters, who eat more than 100 grams of meat per day, emit 2.5 times more greenhouse gases than vegans. Meat and dairy greenhouse gas emissions are not only based on animal feed, but also on the energy-intensive processing and transport of animal-based food. However, this may also be true for plants which are grown in heated greenhouses or transported over long distances such as exotic fruits and vegetables. Furthermore, the manufacturing of meat substitutes may be just as energy-intensive as meat production itself. The impact of vegetarian diets on greenhouse gas emissions largely depends on the intake of dairy products. The more dairy is consumed, the more greenhouse gases are being emitted. Overall, the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions by switching to a vegetarian or vegan diet is therefore likely, but not guaranteed. Coming back to where we began, what does my breakfast have to do with the environment? Opting for a whole foods, plant-based breakfast like oatmeal and local fruits could cut your carbon dioxide emissions and land use in half when compared to, for example, bacon and eggs. But does changing the way I eat really make much of a difference? Milk and meat production are expected to increase by 58 and 73% respectively by the year 2050. We've just heard about the consequences, therefore we think every person's dietary choices matter. Now does that mean that we all have to go vegan? While the authors conclude that overall the vegan diet has the least environmental impact, vegetarian and omnivorous diets can improve their sustainability profile by reducing meat and dairy consumption and eating more plant-based foods. Whether you are vegan, vegetarian or meat eater, eating more wholesome plant-based foods, which are mostly unprocessed, is good for you and the environment. Of course, we do not only want our food to be environment friendly, we also need it to be healthy and nutritious. If you want to find out about plant-based diets and their potential impact on your health, have a look at Dr. Greger's science-based channel nutritionfacts.org. For references and further reading, please see the video's description, which refers to the numbers and brackets throughout the presentation. As always, we appreciate every like and comment. Tell us your opinion. Would you consider switching to a more plant-based diet? Why or why not? Thanks for watching and see you soon.